Okay, it's a bit dark. Is it? <laughs> you now I've got you. Hello. Hello. Is it exposed? Is it dark? Uh, it should be dark. It's all right. It's a. Okay. Light it up in the end of the sun. Okay. Enjoy part 38. There's all sorts in here. I'm going crazy. I really am going crazy. It's cold today. It's about the 2nd of September or maybe the 3rd or something like that. It's raining, it's cold, we've been to a car show called Mondeley Castle. And we saw a Taurus and another Eno Cortina. Uh, I think it was uh, T. T Eno next to P Eno. But we tipped off, we scrambled because there's news of an abandoned Cortina out in the fields, actually in a hedge, or right next to a hedge. We're gonna go and check it out. Bear with us, we'll be right there soon. Our attention to detail keeps on going. Just this in before we're doing the seats there. Uh, rebuilt the mirror, new chrome centre screw, newly painted, colour matched in stalk, and then refurbed the plastic body. And the glass is mark free, especially around the edges where they normally go. So a nice dipping Cortina mirror there. So I just thought I'd add that into the little bits that we're putting together just between the seat job. A nice mirror as well, just showing you the attention to detail we're doing on the interior to keep it looking nice, keep it looking original. So how about that for Cortina styled mirror? Oh yeah, I like it. Sean's back. He wanted to be in part 38, so he's in. People have been asking where you've been hiding, Sean. Working. Sit. Don't don't say a lot, Sean, but he works a lot. Let's get the sun dim glass cleaned anyway. Looking nice, we'll get a full set. Let's do it. Just making some new weatherproof seals for these back lights. You see me working on the back lights. We've made a template. This weatherproof foam strip material cut out as a template. And we're just applying now into the lights we go to make these nice new, very shiny lights. We've got one we've done over here that we really like. It's all been cleaned up and it's looking good. Working on the interiors. Sorry, the uh, exterior fittings. So yeah, I'm just going to talk you through what we did with the lamps. We had some new gaskets on, which we've made out of foam rubber, both inside and out. Using a template with the old gasket, we end up with these off-cuts. craft knife, a cutting bench, ruler, marker pen. It's quite easy, that one. Didn't really film that uh, for you. But we've got some good lenses on, on these, and uh, we fitted chrome screws or gal uh, stainless screws with the retaining rubbers on the inside basically when the lens comes off I'll get a, an old lens that's damaged screws just sit inside here with a retaining ring on them you can use a very small rubber grommet very small there's one that I, them type that I've been using slide them onto the shaft if you can't find the original Ford kits which had a washer sort of pushed on fiber washer pushed on I haven't seen any yet there's maybe some on eBay but these work um, clean the reflectors up some Ford uh, rear tail lights you did away with the um, focusing 
parabolic mirror inside and just ended up certainly for the reverse and the indicator they just ended up uh, spraying them silver and I thought that someone had refurbed some lights that I had and sprayed them silver but every other Cortina I've looked at apart from one and I mean my cars and, and the scrapped parts that I've got have been painted silver and the very early ones had parabolic mirror reflectors with basically uh, tin glued into the uh, one so I had an uneven pair I had one that was painted silver on on the there and one that had the reflectors so I managed to find two more reflectors and when testing it with the reflectors the indicators are almost a third brighter again the same with the reverse lights almost a third brighter in fact these are almost torch like uh, with the reflectors in and they do work in reverse it does light up what's behind you so I can't see why they've downgraded these lamps later on I cannot see why I mean I know they've done it later because the facelift head uh, tail lights that I've got are also sprayed silver no idea why that is um, but anyway they've been rebuilt I've got LED stop and tail in but standard 21 watt bulbs on reverse and indicate so they are finished and done the casings themselves cleaned up quite well so they're very clean both units are very clean and tidy so they're, they're very nice uh, light clusters there for the back and I cleaned all the connectors greased them put some uh, petroleum on what they call connector protector basically petroleum jelly just on anywhere that could get exposed to water not that we want any water coming into the car but it's good practice so a pair there done took a day to do you wouldn't think it cleaning stripping rebuilding um and just making the gaskets and, and making the swapping the parabolics across they're tricky to do because they're glued in you've got to heat them up and pop them out then you get dents in them so you've got to roll the dents out with a socket or a roll roller bar anyway got a good set done one thing to remember if you are doing it and you haven't got this fitted in your light plastic if you're doing a Cortina rebuild and you've not had any lights in the past and you've just acquired so make sure you've got this piece of metal in your light lens see how it slots in there it's a strange fit it just pushes in at, at an angle it goes only goes one way as well it's designed to separate the light box between the indicator and the reverse light if you don't have it when your reverse lights are on it will bleed across and vice versa indicators bleed across so you've got to have that to, to stop the light entering from one side to the other so I don't know why they built it that way it also only angles one way if you try and angle it the other way it doesn't perform its job properly I don't actually know I mean I've got mine right because I've just tested these and there's no bleed through that's totally isolated so I think it points in let's just have a look at the, there is a shape to the edge of the metal strip so it is designed to go in one way it seems to fit in one way better than the other as well so perhaps that's the reason why it's got this guide on it try it anyway I think it's that way pointing slightly across so that would be that if you've not got these I'll hold this on screen because I would imagine this is something that easily gets lost has easily got lost on your car in, in its history, its 45 year old history um, you know it, it, even in the 70s people could have lost these changing bulbs so easy that they fall out so have a look at that um, half moon, well not even quite a half moon but that's the shape, you could easily replicate something just with some aluminium sheet and it wouldn't even need to have that profile there you, as long as you've got the curve and you could easily uh, bend the aluminium to, to angle the way that it needs to go, the way that it's designed to go. But you will need that if you've got these pre-facelift units and you're restoring your car and you haven't got uh, them complete and you've built some up off eBay parts. Because you'd be very surprised if eBay send you that with it. I've never seen them on when I've seen lenses. And when you see the uh, backing plates, the backing clusters listed on eBay as well, without the lenses on, often you don't see that stuck in it because it's got it actually doesn't actually fit in it. It just sits in there with no uh, fixture. It's, it's re it relies on the lens. So something to uh, bear in mind because I know a lot of people have been sending me messages uh, on YouTube on the private message asking a couple of tech questions. Feel free to ask them publicly. It's not a problem. Then we can all discuss publicly. It might be better that way. Indeed, some people have done that. So, uh, yeah, I would just suggest um, 
making one if they're missing moving across to the center console we've been working on that i'm just finishing restoring the um, center t-shift changing module uh, surround a scutch on or selector mechanism whatever you want to call it um, and a scutch on is a bit uh, basic description because this is more than that it's a selector indicator i think would be better more accurate this selector indicator was missing its perspex cover here so i got perspex and and um, cut it to shape i tried a few different ways of cutting the perspex sheet stanley knife and snapping I wasn't getting much success with it, it was hit and miss. Ended up, funnily enough, using an angle grinder and a slitting disc, overcutting it and slowly, slightly sanding back till I had the correct uh, width. And then I used a heat gun to curve the plastic to follow the profile of this. I curved it round in a hammerite tin. Got it hot and let it melt over the hammerite tin. Watch out the hammerite tin paint uh, finish on the tin. It tells you what's inside the tin can melt and mix your plastic up so watch out use something to a, um, a piece of paper over it i did in the end uh, that was taken apart rebuilt we had to re bond in the parts you'll see at the top the bonding material that's a resin uh, it's called jb weld very very good stuff jb weld highly recommend using jb weld for little repairs strong stuff you can get a metal version you can get a plastic version and the metal version is the best. There is another bonding agent available that I've just discovered as well. I'm forgetting the name of it now. I've just bought a little kit. I'll talk about that later on. Anyway, we cleaned this up. De-dusted it because it's all dust ingrained in it. Then it was stripped back to its alumit, to its chrome finish. And um, you could be tempted to keep it chrome. But they actually keyed the chrome and scored it or scuffed the chrome. So even if you do want to de-chrome these, certainly... Um, the later ones because there's two types of these as well we noticed the later ones are scuffed on the chrome so when you finish it back you end up with a not good chrome finish anyway so this was remasked and then re-satined to give nice detailing then that goes through this aperture here now don't worry about the color because that's just because that's the vinyl that i've got not even vinyl actually this is a rubber heel mat which was initially originally going to be sewn into the carpets of um ruby and I didn't use it in the end so because I didn't have this uh, little trim piece I've made one using the heel mat and this will lend itself very nicely to the vinyl coat paint of this color so it's not going to stick out like this it's going to be matched in as that's a bit too much so I want that to blend in with the console made a little inlay for the console there that comes out it's just to stop it getting scratched um, it'll straighten up it's just a little piece of rubber heel mat again you know about those centre clocks. We talked about them on the early videos. We're going to start building the clocks up next. Now that we've done the lights, we're going to start building the clocks up. Because we'll, this is more stuff to get into the storage boxes ready for when the car gets back. So we um, we dye that to match this. And then this pops through it, which gives you that trim area there. And just neatens that area up otherwise you can see through into the transmission tunnel so uh, that goes in there there's also a foam pad which fits behind it we'll cut that later so that's looking tidy so as we pan up we've got a nice center console there if i flip it upside down you'll be able to see how we made this it's a piece of metal plate bonded to the metal plate is the heel pad to give it some rigidity otherwise it's going to be all over the place it also helps to form this shape and that starts to retain its shape this pushes up through it so that's that the armrest center console bit we were looking for places to fit the heated seat controls we've made an inlay panel there that's spot welded in simply a piece of metal and then it's cut out to take the switch so that'll the lid will fold down and uh, it'll hide the controls for the heated seats and um, the profile of the switch is okay because the lid has some rubber feet on it to stand it off so that actually fits I've tried it so that it doesn't hit the switch when you close the lid okay so that's that um, I think that's covered on these parts I'm just gathering together the powder coated center mount brackets we've got to find the the little clips that fit in here that so you can screw your screws through sort of cage clips if you will and then we've got a uh, bonnet 
release cable to do some other parts for the center console so that i'm working on that area surprising how long it's taken to be fair but we'll keep on moving because you're in part 38 and you're waiting to see that shell come back news from the body shop is uh, the shell comes back just the shell the panels are coming in as a separate job it also helps us that we won't damage anything when we're rebuilding so uh, we'll be jumping up there soon stick with me i'm going to go show you the back seats now because they are now in stock as well so we have back seats let's go up and have a look at those okay so all seats so i've got one obviously driver's seats just not placed down there but just put passenger in front of there to compare everything nice and even so back seats then done not much to report except to say they're all quite taut and there's no sagginess there so I'm pretty pleased with the way that's gone. Okay, so we are getting together everything we can. For this big assembly it begins in this film in 38. You're getting excited. It's building up. The pressure's building up. No, the excitement's building up. As you see all these parts come together. Let's go and have a look at the door cards. I've laid them out. Let's go. We also have the crash pad top. That's done. Our door cards here as we now assemble kits of door card parts. This one's done at the end. We've mocked that up with some blocks of wood just to screw through the uh, fixtures just to get everything in position. That Don't worry about that handle, that goes the other way around. That's facing the wrong way, but that's fine. Then looking for some side trim pieces here. Parcel shelves, a choice of two. Done there. There's our other seats just waiting a little bit of work on the side chrome trim, which is damaged. It's only damaged on the securing post. We're ready to start fixing that soon. So I carry on with the trim centre console and all those bits while they're just finishing off the last few layers of paint we're going to go and check it out soon so don't worry about that uh, things are hotting up oh, we've also got our refurbed heater dash vents they're just baking in the UV get them nice and uh, solid the sun comes on and bakes them nice resatting all took apart new rubbers all refurbished they're lovely okay we've got them work continues on centre console Nicely re-chromed hinges, nicely re-chromed uh, centre console lid stay. They went into the chromers and I forgot all about them. Let's get them fitted. Some rivets to go in there for this inner tray. Comes with a nice interior light as well. Talk about that in a minute. Cubby old light for that. Little extras, hidden extras. Mac is not going to like that one. We know the Cortina police are watching. We rivet here, these are low profile rivets, but I haven't got any, so I'll just take the head off them because that needs to be a flush fit. Okay, so rivet on for this centre console now. Radio 6 is playing, you get a mix of strange records and good ones. At least you don't get any adverts. On we go with this lid now. We've got the top prepared as well. We'll keep on going through. We've put the paint on the centre trim piece too. We've vinyl dyed that to match in. Looking good. Let me get this rivet. Okay, rivet heads ground flush still plenty of contact on those don't worry that you've got a little bit of scuff on the plastic surround because our trim piece goes over it so we're all nicely secured we'll blow this out of compressed air after trim piece on top now that comes with a heated seat controls there see how we've modified this plate to keep it uh, nice and discreet all the time i'll show you a few other features as well hold on cubby old build here we go center armrest cubby old compartment as they say on the ford film just slot that into there craig charles funk show Just slot that uh, arm stay through there, but we're, we're lining up good.
final stages of the lid. Center console lid, final stages. Guys, just rebuilding the gauges now. I've got my center pod console. Exciting stuff, getting this ready. Uh, each gauge, I'm just preparing and cleaning the glasses. On the very early gauges, the glass indicator uh, bezels were cone shaped. You can just see that cone in there. Then later on, there was an intermediate design, similar but totally flat, similar logo. Then I think they changed it yet again to slightly larger dial faces. But um, the way that it is at the moment, we've got the oil pressure gauge here going in, cleaned up. And then just on its locating tabs, you'll see I put little foam pads there. Now that stops your, your face plate rattling and creates a, a sort of push, squeeze fit there. You need those. So we're going to put that all together now. Get the back on there. Let's do that. Okay, guys. So I'm carrying on doing these gauges. I'm just picking out the best lenses I can find. I've just found another batch, so I'm going to redo it. Uh, some slightly better perspex is here um, I've just mocked them up over there but I'm gonna just re go through them again so as I said we'll put little, new little rubber bounce pads on these little cushions and then put the uh, the gauges together and that'll complete that centre console and then we'll, we'll, that's ready to go into the wiring harness that'll complete the, the centre console for now anyway we're running out of uh, interior parts to do we're nearly done there's a couple of little bits on the door card seats are finished i'll take you up to the uh, attic next door and we'll um we'll look at them seats as well so let me carry on clean up these lenses and we'll reassemble all into there hopefully all nicely dusted down and done so gauge pod central carrying on okay so here's the amp one going in some g3 polish it's a very fine uh, polish which just helps clean in perspex good stuff g3 polish for that then those new little foam pads on there telling you about all right it's quite good when you put them on because this means the uh, the glass itself compresses in nicely you don't get any rattles from your clocks so you see that going in and then as i push down that's a nice spring tight loaded fit then i get a little lens brush very soft bristled lens brush here to take the dust off as well just means they're going in nice and clean so that top bezel goes on you'll notice these are painted with a kind of blue reflective paint to help with illumination at night that gives a little blue slight blue tinge to your dials only very slightly if you use an LED illumination it'll pick that out a little bit so that's the amp one there's our gauge face we look at that and it's pretty clean there's nothing to, to do to that, it's not worth taking that apart or anything, there's pretty much nothing to do to that, it's just straight back on again with the two screws and that's assembled in nicely for the clocks, that completes all four, and I'll just put it back into its housing now because we're done with that for now, we'll move on to something else. Okay, we're all in, and we're all nice, you'll notice a shine on that centre uh, pod mount, that's to match the dash shine because the dash comes down here very shiny, so it, it flows the uh, the finish into the centre console. Normally that would be matted out. So that is too shiny, strictly speaking. But when you see it up against the dash, you'll see that it flows down. So it's, it's slightly... It is, of course, non-factory, that finish. But as you know, on this car, there are some... It is a little bit 10% down on, on factory finish. It's very easy to revert it back, though. Um, I mean, obviously, the shine on the dash is permanent. But you, I have kept a version of that centre pod non-chromed and just totally standard in the uh, in the ruby red finish in matte if you ever wanted to change it if you don't like it so it can go back obviously this is slightly different but I think that works quite well so that's about the best you're going to get you're not going to get one of them trim pieces so you know we refurb that nice new uh, rubber gator there as well and that new perspex that we fit so that's done and it's a nice finish on here looks like it's going to clean up well we'll silicon that as well so center pod let's uh we should be finished with the armrest i'll talk you through the armrest now we'll go up and have a look at that in the meantime i've got my gauge box here so i'll put all the spare gauge things safely away here because you don't want to get any of these damaged so let's get these away into the box now and we're, we're done with that we keep on going, we just uh, refurbed the handbrake, uh, masked up, shot blasted back, 
uh, etched primed and, and uh, sat in black on that one then grease on the ratchet mechanism of the handbrake lever just to let you know we're doing all the details that we can we left them galvanized brackets like that no point replating those so a plastic primer on the handle to uh, give it a, a, a key and then um, a plastic bumper paint rubberized paint on the handbrake release handle and then uh, we've blown grease down into the operating rod so that button's nice and smooth as well so just as I say uh, keeping the detailing on handbrake done that's part of the center console you see we've cleaned up the the rubber mount kit for it as well and also a couple of bump stops for the axle so just honing it down to the finer little small parts now everybody we're getting close uh, getting close to the end of the videos not the end of 38 we still plenty of action of course but the end of the uh, restoration side and it's all about rebuild reassembly so another chapter opens soon in 39 and we're nearly done 40 should be the end of the series and we hope you've enjoyed it all let's get up to 40 anyway for now i keep on going okay let's find something else to do just putting some silicon food on the rubber gator it helps uh, stopping the rubber from perishing and, and cracking these tend to be pretty tough going and uh, i've seen a couple split but i put that in silicon rubber food and just massage it into the gator you may as well it won't take any longer to do and it keeps uh, it keeps everything looking nice and uh, you just know that everything's good also when you start refurbing the smallest of details and parts it helps to keep the car like a factory new smell as well because once you start getting down to every little bit all the smells of the different chemicals are mixed together and you get that new car factory smell so a real nice uh, clean gator there all the old dust and muck off it because they do build up quite a bit of dirt under there that was in the dishwasher for a while and then uh, a nice wipe down and then the silicon food that can slide onto our newly refurbished um, oh it's the brake uh, it's the parking brake handle I slide straight over there now okay and then that assembly unit can go up and live next to the console with the rest of the bits so I twisted the camera there trying to get that on keep I like to keep this camera level I don't like you getting seasick at home okay enough of that move on oh before I do <laughs> We even powder coated the retaining ring for it, keeping it detailed. Okay, definitely move on. There you go. There you go. All nicely done. I can put that. When I put that in the car, I'll know I've done my best on it. it. Should be nice and smooth as well with the grease and everything. Lovely. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the trim assembly area. So we lay out all the trim. There's our lovely back seats that we were telling you about. They come up just as good as the front seats. Well pleased with those. They're not heated at the back. Front are heated. Two refurbed uh, seat belts that we had sent away to be rebuilt. So they're all nicely done. And then the centre console there. And the centre could be all looking shiny. And we just give that a slight buff down to lose that that shine. It's not really too shiny. So we just uh, we've got a little sort of it's like talcum powder stuff you use, and it just takes the slight edge off it. Very fine cutting powder stuff. Just take a bit of sheen off that centre lid. It does look nice and clean. So um, the handbrake, as you just saw, would go straight through that gator there. T shifters to be done when the car's getting built. Just done the clocks laid out the carpet so there's the first view of the carpet we've got to keep it laid flat just so it doesn't crease up now you might see I've got the seats on it I don't want to put too many uh, impressions into the carpet so I've got little bits of cardboard just under the feet there but I've got to be careful about that so there's our colours you can see how they work a nice blend across okay so I think that's uh, pretty good I'm, I'm quite pleased with the way the colours have gone and our door cards getting ready there at the sides bit by bit we build those door card packs up some chrome handles on just waiting for some winders for this some good winders I've got uh, a couple of winders missing that are decent ones anyway they were rattling your little winder knobs can rattle okay so I've been uh, I've been refurbing some of those our underlay kit is there that's our dead sound deadening underlay kit on top of the dynamat 
you know we did that centre console rebuild so let's look how those heated seat controls would be round we go I just lift up to get to my temperature controls there's our nicely refurbished uh, little compartment now you can see little speckles in there that's just plastic filings from the aluminium filings from when I ground the rivet down earlier I'll just air back out or blow out down for the lid okay we'll take that slight sheen off and that's about it there so we'll wait this really now waits till the cars here There's not much else I can do I just wanted to get all the parts I knew that I had everything there's a couple of screws I need the actual trim mounting screws I've got the cage nut things just need the actual a screw kit needs making okay that's that there's a little bit of touching up to do on the hinge the um, seat refurb guy he missed painting that inner hinge there that's easily done I can do that I uh, might have to just hand brush that on it's about the looks of, you know we can't get everything right I've done my best I'm pretty pretty good okay those side trims there you get some more bits of carpet this is a kit that you've got to fit yourself of course it's not a Ford carpet but I wouldn't have got one if one comes up in the meantime I will use that but it's a nice plush carpet okay so there's our scheme coming together nicely we keep on going we keep the pressure on we've got the parcel shelf done our glass is all lined up behind it so we're using the time to the max. I've now got to build a centre speaker for the dashboard because that's something I've not done yet. That's the twin cone centre speaker. You'll see us fitting that later on in the build, probably in part uh, 39, okay, when we're assembling the car. So 39 is going to be exciting as well. 38 builds you up to the big finale. 40 sees the MOT and road testing, and 40 should be the last film of Project Ruby. That should then get you ready for the NEC that's what my uh, plan is anyway don't worry if I get a bit of dust on these carpets it'll all just wipe off it's a bit dusty up in the, the unit here um, we just just basically we're uh, pinching some space so uh, I've just run out of space and I didn't want to get any of this damage and up here it's away from any machinery so across this is where we built the seats it's a bit, a bit of a, a boring space here like but it's space after all and that's all we need we've got a crash pad done some other, other trim pieces for the interior of the car and then we're just trying to work out our best set of uh, side trims that go along the inner sill got a few to choose from there we're going to get them uh, painted parcel shelf we had a couple one to the right is the one i'm probably going to be using this one's a bit scuffed you can get those brand new from the mark free owners club if you want to join if you if you've got a mark free and you're not in the club i recommend it at 20 quid well worth it get in get onto the club there's a good forum on there as well okay so continuing on it's non-stop i must admit every spare hour that i've got uh, i use other than living my life of course we're not completely uh, hooked up, up on this it is quite addictive i must admit especially this part starts to get really exciting and addictive when all these shiny bits start to come together i'm sure you know that yourselves um it's been a long time building all this up and You've been very patient, so thanks for the patience in waiting as those videos clock up. And towards the end, a lot of engine testing stuff, and I was testing your patience, guys, out there. I know you like to see the shiny stuff, but it'll be worth it until this is all done. And Jim sat in that passenger seat, and Gary's in the back there. Or they could even swap places if they want. Gary, if you want to come in the front, who's Gary? Who's Jim? They're some of the original people from day one and they kind of like they're in us with us in spirit Gary Noggy and uh, little Newt Jim they're kind of like with me as I'm filming you see although all you guys are because I'm starting to get to know people on the comments now and there's a lot of uh, people on there I've, I've, I think I've managed to say hello to each and every one of you sometimes my replies may be a little bit short but I try and listen to what you've said and take on board your points however uh, little or big they are those those uh, comments it doesn't matter they're all as important because they're all positive ones that's all what, what it's all about is constructive criticism's fine as you know that's the way forward um, and we like to we like to do and we like to deliver what we say there's no point trying to get the project done on what it's going to be and what we're going to do and this is going to be this and one day this is going to that's it we're interested in right now what you're doing right now what's moving you know all these kind of um, 
pipe dream things you know it's no good you've got to actually move well one day we'll do this and one day we'll we'll do that there is no one day it's 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 now so that's how you get there it's non-stop it's full-on power okay next thing let's go and find something to do because some <laughs> yeah we're gonna run out of things here I've got that electronics, that heavy build on the electronics. I say heavy, it's mainly relay logic. I'll only include a little bit of that. That's the kind of cruise control system, and the uh, there's a couple of other little controls that we need to add in, and some wiring looms to do. We could do with getting the dashboard set up. I'm thinking of placing it along here while I've got the chance. I've got another four weeks to pinch this unit here, so I'm thinking dash could go there, and then you can get a full idea of how we're looking. And uh, words in that the car's painted as well, so we'll be going down there soon. Have a look at that car, it's really exciting. Okay, let's keep moving. Just between jobs, guys, I'm testing out the cruise control. I've got it mocked up here, just fitted this. This was the next job I was looking for. There's the bellows, they work off atmospheric pressure, so when the vac pump draws out of there, atmospheric pressure squashes this, you'd think it's the vac pump that's pulling it but it's not, it's the fact that atmospheric pressure can collapse that down and you, would, you wouldn't think this is powerful enough to actually activate the, the wide open throttle of the car but it will do it, um, you'll get a full deflection there if I jam the end of the intake you can get it to go where you want. I'm just squeezing a little bit there now. You wouldn't think you could do it. I'll show you what we've got rigged up. It might need a little bit of tweaking. Round we go. So there it is. It's pretty much how we set it up on the bench that time on earlier films. The uh, Granada cruise cable there is adjustable just to get the right bite point. You can still accelerate. We've rigged the accelerator up just on the bracket onto this frame. It's quite handy and fitted. So I can accelerate off. And that just slides there so it doesn't get in the way of the cruise control. That's full now. But if you pull the bellows, the bellows will draw that in like that. Now, the bellows can pull 60 newton meters of force. I don't know how much the Pinto needs. I would have thought there wouldn't be much difference between this and the uh, the Granada, but they might have used levers. I've gone virtually direct. I'm not getting much leverage force here at all, so I'm losing a bit. But the range of the bellows isn't far off. From fully open to fully closed, you get the full rev range. So we're going to have to see how that works. We need to get the vac pump. I think I've left that in the car at the paint shop. So. If I was to connect the vac pump up to this and just run it a little bit, I can just see if, if indeed those bellows are able to pull that throttle open there like that. We're going to test that in the next uh, few minutes. Let's see what we can do and then we'll uh, go and spy on the body shell. Clips so are just going to keep on rolling in as we take off and on trips to the body shop to see how they're getting on. Let's go in and see them now. I think they've done the engine bay and the boot. I think they're nearly done on the actual main shell itself. So let's go and have a look. Let's see what they've been up to. At least you can have the shell back deep once the roof's done on that. And... Yeah, I've got shit the vinyl roof to go, go on. Yeah. That's going to delay me a bit. because It's got to be booked in for that. Yeah. It's Railway Crossing Lottery and we're in, we are in. A little sneak of the car under the sheet there, just to tease you a little bit. Uh, he didn't want me to take the cover off because they were painting. He didn't want anything over there, but I did sneak a preview under that sheet and it looks nice. Railway Train Lottery, here we go. What are we going to get? Oh, Pacer. Twin, <laughs> there's four of them. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you see that? Four little baby Pacers. They're ugly, aren't they? I love them. Guys, I said there'd be a little tech interval in the film, and I know some people don't like that. But, what can I say? It's got to be done. I'm starting to build the loom now for the cruise control going onto the gearbox while I'm waiting for the shell to come back. 
nearly ready. Don't worry, it's going to be in this film. So we've got a, a couple of cruise control units. This one is the original. They ain't got the best reputation for solder, so you can actually repair. This one needs a little bit of a dry joint fixing, but I had a backup. I'm going to fix that later. This one's straight up and running. So uh, what I've done here is the loom that goes on the gearbox. In the end of my drill is the gearbox uh, speed sensor. So all you're doing really, that's that's on the output shaft and it rotates inside here. It's a free wire setup. For your reference, uh, brown is ground, black is 12 volts, yellow is the output. Now that output, each time this rotates, this one will give a, a blip of power, a pulse of power. And I use the oscilloscope there. I mean, this was covered on an earlier video. I use that scope there to monitor each blip of each turn. So as I turn this, now look what I'm doing there, just rotating. I've got it connected to the drill. You'll see that line jump up and down. Now, there it is staying up. That's We've got this set for um, two volts a square, so you can see it's two squares, so that's four, then another half, so that's five. So you can tell we can use the scope to help us check the voltage as well. So we're on the zero line. You'll see a cross on the scope which you can just set and just get it exactly in the middle that's its calibration so that's calibrated um, and what I do when I rotate the sensor it will go into its high state there it's funny because on your screen the lines are going from left to right on my, on my here now this is constant I'll probably be able to get it on your screen by boosting my uh, time division but anyway two squares plus a half again makes five volts so this sensor here each time it turns it gives a five volt blip at the end so you'll see now that if I turn the drill on look how it starts jumping and it's what you call a square wave and you'll see why it's called a square wave now I'm going to hold that and just show you So that creates squares on the screen, why it's called square wave. So that's functioning, so we know that the speed sensor itself works. So we follow the wires up from the speed sensor, and all we've got to do is connect that speed sensor into the input of the cruise control. We do that by referring to the schematics over here, which tells us where the various pinouts are. This is a Land Rover one, but it's, it's done by Bosch. Hella, which is the same as the Ford one, more or less. So we look on here to find out where the speed signal is, it's on pin 11. So all I'm doing then is I'm going to find pin 11 on here and I put the speed 5 volt pulse signal goes into there. The rest of the controls are just off on on your controls, brake switch. It has to have the brake light bulbs fitted. If there's no brake light bulbs, the unit won't boot up. It, it needs to look at the bulbs to make the sure it must be a safety thing. So I have to connect the bulbs into here for the brake lights. A couple of switches, brake pedal switch. I've overridden the brake pedal switch by just joining it together for now to get the system tested. So all I'm going to do, it looks a mess and it is a mess, but we start to neaten up. I've started to make the loom up here, going up this way. We're even including some Ford labels there and uh, the grey loom tape, so it makes it look factory. So that's our loom. It's got our reverse switch, park inhibit, torque converter lockup we'll talk about that excuse the pun later and uh, the kick down switch which is going to need the kick down relay again we'll talk about that later the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get a movable loom so that i can take it across over to the gearbox and engine and kind of like have this rigged up with some croc clips croc it onto the battery of me engine jig and then we'll um, connect the, the cable. There's our vac pump, and there's our diaphragm bellows. They're all ready to go. We're just going to mock it up onto the engine. Then we're going to start the engine, and um, 
I'll monitor the pulses on the screen of the scope of what the engine's kicking out. And then we should be able to press a switch. These are the two switches here, very crudely just dangling around. You touch them onto 12, but we'll put some buttons on. We'll make a little test box in a minute. We'll get a plastic box down from the stores and we'll make some a couple of buttons. In a nutshell, what we're going to do is we're going to fire up the uh, the engine and let the cruise control run it. Now, the only thing I'm not sure about is that there's no loading on the output of the gearbox. So when that uh, cruise control activates the pump and activates the bellows, which pulls the cable, which pulls the accelerator, it's going to be instant. If it was in the car with the road wheels on, there'd be a lot of uh, resistance and it wouldn't be as quick to uh, spin the gearbox up. So that's going to possibly confuse the cruise control or make it react more harshly than it would normally but what we should be able to see is it should attempt to rev the engine and then start to stabilize itself as the output shaft begins to turn the pulses on this they'll feed back to the computer it'll see that it's reached the speed then it'll drop the vacuum out of here which will kill the accelerator pedal so we should see some movement and some dancing around now it might fly all over the place because it's um it isn't, it's too responsive, the uh, the output shaft of the gearbox with it not having the axle connected. However, it will test the fact that it can go through the accelerator uh, torque and uh, open up the, um, the throttles okay. It'll be very interesting to see what it does actually, freewheeling. Uh, this would be equivalent, almost equivalent to you jacking the wheels up of your car and switching your cruise on with your back wheel spinning. Maybe not quite as bad because you'd have the axle on of course and that would create some uh, loading on it so we're even less than that it's equivalent to taking your prop shaft off actually and then hitting cruise okay so there we go with that it's time to neaten up the cables we've got ourselves a, a rat's nest of messy wires that's because i'm dropping crock clips in and just learning about the system and then once i'm once i'm happy about it and i'm confident that it boots up every time then i start to make the wire wrapping so we've, we've head started by heading up this way and I terminate the end of my uh, grey loom tape with some Tessa cloth tape ready to make my next set of connections here. There's a kind of breakout area here. It's time now to build a bit more of a loom to tidy up the cables to get ourselves a couple of little controls and then take this across to the engine and hook it all up and see what happens. Oh my god guys look at all the mess. Wow, my brain's just unfolded on the floor. A rat nest awaits us. Yes, it does. Uh, diagnostic LED on. That's going to be uh, an indicator on your dash. Why the mess? Why all this mess? Why all this mess? I don't know why there's all this mess. Uh, because I was building the looms and then just my brain just unfolds and then little clips and things appear. Um, what it was, I know what all the wires do. I've marked them. So I do know what's going on. Two units, uh, because one was giving me uh, intermittent faults. However, I've managed to repair both units now. And all I did to repair it was re-solder some of the bad connections on the board. I had to take off the uh, protective coating if somehow this flags up as a Land Rover video for Land Rover Cruise Repair or um, Ford, because it's the same hella units. Slightly different codes, but uh, similar idea. Um, you can put them in thinners, just car body thinners, and get that um, gunge off the back. It's a protective coating, but I think it causes more harm than good. Then clean it up with thinners. Try it first after you've just cleaned the board without any soldering, because you might find that um, this protective coating causes a problem with the board. I reflow soldered uh, some of the dodgy looking connections, and both units are now fully operational. They were only working when they were warm. When they cooled down, they used to start clicking in and out and not working at all. So these units are prone to failure. And when you Google this unit, it comes up with loads of people saying, my cruise unit only works when it's warm, then as soon as it's cold, it doesn't go. People warming them up, trying to get them going. Well, it's something to do with the solder, and it's something to do with that protective coat in there. Because when you scrub that off, they start to work a lot better. Thinners, car body thinners, in it goes. I had nothing to lose. It could have attacked the, the components, but it didn't brushed it with a toothbrush again static could have blown the board I had nothing to lose a 15 quid board and it was gonna not be used so it was a last attempt and it worked it paid off I had nothing to lose as I say 
boards could end up getting chucked. I wouldn't do that, I'd have kept them, but they'd be marked up faulty. But however, both units now perform totally differently with the coating removed and the the, the um, any solder join that you can see. You've got to get a microscope out and you'll see little fractures and you get your soldering iron once the board's clean with the thinners and touch them back in and let that reflow. This one actually just started working without any resoldering work just by taking the protective layer off the back that began to work totally differently now that's freezing cold and it should boot up okay so we're going to look at that now and we're going to carry on we're going to connect this up to the car and um, if I connect it up to the car the gearbox is going to instantly rev up too fast and the cruise will see that as a fault and it'll just keep dropping out so there's only one way to do it and that's by rigging this as the speed simulator and we're just going to test the actual throttle response not the actual feedback from the gearbox so it's not going to be trying to lock onto a speed because um, you've got to have the road wheels on really to create a rolling momentum otherwise as soon as the revs drop off the uh, the speed sensor will instantly drop down with it when normally that wouldn't happen You'd, the momentum of your car would be rolling keeping a steady speed even though the accelerator's dropped off the the momentum of the car itself is needed to test this so there's only one way to really test it and that's on the road however we can get 90% of the way there by testing the throttle system using this to simulate the speed so I say this scope it's not it's this signal generator this will be my road wheel speed so this is effectively the car rolling in motion so we'll let it kick in and then I'll try and simulate the car slowing down and we should hear the engines rev and as it revs we'll then turn back that's the closest we're going to get to a simulation on cruise we do this between jobs cars painted don't worry about that you're right in the middle of, of 38 okay you're right in the middle of it as we speak they're spraying painting buffing and flattening down the rest of the parts we're going straight to the headlining and the vinyl roof guys so cars not coming back here it's going straight there so in the meantime we'll carry on assembling keep it keep it going just stay on your seats if you want to have a little break now go and get your tea coffees pause your iPhones your computers whatever you want to do but we're right in the middle of it guys it's messy I promise you I'm gonna make these all these neat now when you see this okay I've tied it up I told you I would don't take long, don't take long to do. So <clears throat> we now we know this unit's consistently performing now since I've done that clean up on it. We've even put a, a pass sticker on. Oh yeah, why not? So I've just repaired the plug with some uh, epoxy. It's good stuff that. I'll show you what it's called by the way, because people are asking, it's called Connect. Two part epoxy get plastic and metal connect resin glue really good can't live without that stuff so handy so I repaired that plug that module's a real good unit it's, it's fantastic now none of those intermittent faults I was getting so to simplify things the little cable here goes to the gearbox that's the speed sender at the moment the speed sender signal is copied by this and monitored by that you didn't actually need the oscilloscope but it's handy to see that you've got your signal running in so that simulates the wheel spinning there that's that cable which will go down to the gearbox module to fit in the car goes under the seat at the, under the back seat that's where the planned installation is okay and then we've got a power hookup coming in 12 volts just on my finger there only one lead needed for that it's going through a fuse that controls the cruise control motor pump in case anything failed these will be the dash switches so they're hanging free at the moment to be connected through to the steering stalk so there's the steering stalk controls or one of them at least the power one will also be on there because it'll kill it completely on the stalk uh, there's a ground link there to just ground out the uh, to common ground the uh, input of the speed signals these pieces of kit have to share the same ground as the power pack that you're using so that it creates a loop otherwise it won't read the speed signal if you are doing this at home and you're injecting a speed signal in make sure you come in the ground up from the uh, square wave generator otherwise it, uh, it won't read it 
so over now that's that bit that's the messiest bit but that's just because it's ready to connect into the loom of the car we don't want to bunch that up yet this bit's bunched up and done uh, then we've got the pump itself that's going to be fitting in the back of the car in the in the boot area in the near the spare jack hidden away behind the panel the holes are already made for that to mount that's so we don't get any noise uh, bellows go under the dashboard they operate silently so you don't hear those there's a bit of movement noise but you won't really hear that I didn't want it in the engine bay you see because trying to keep the uh, engine bay looking good then trailing away right towards the end is the brake pedal switches two lots one connects to the bulbs themselves because this monitors your bulbs or uses the bulbs as an earth signal and the other pair are independent from the uh, the brake circuit on, on the Cortina and go straight back to this unit and they also incorporate the special vent switch which dumps all the vacuum out you use a T-piece of vacuum for that then hooked into the loom for testing only you disconnect this under normal circumstances but I've built a little breakout box here which simulates uh, the brake application of brakes and then, then uh, we've got um, set speed and then resume and coast so coast and resume and then um, set and increase speed okay so we can simulate it up it should boot up it's got a slow signal coming in it's about 40 mile an hour at the moment let's look at the bellows across with the switch uh, set is going to be have I disconnected the power? Have I got, not got enough revs? We should be on. Nothing's disconnected. I think I'm low on revs. Hold on. Turn the revs up. Oh, sorry, the RPM. Hang on. I think we've pulled the speed signal off. Not enough speed. Okay, better speed now. So we're uh, just taking brake and then set. Coast and resume. Back to set speed. Coast, resume. Coast, resume. What I do now, see where the bellows park. Watch where the bellows park. Okay, they're parking there. Cancel. Turn the speed down so I'm now cruising at a lower speed down to say it just dropped out then as well because it recognised an error the fact the car was slowing down even though it's got the revs on so that's a slower speed which we now set doesn't go as far in now stops about there because it doesn't need as much rev so that's how it is we can now go and connect this up to the engine jig and it should send the revs up we should be able to monitor how the cables pull in on the revs that's the exciting bit let's go and rig it up okay we're all set up for the big test signal coming in to the unit power to the unit engineer ready to go bellows there connected <clears throat> I'll just show you before we start we had to bring in the accelerator, uh, the throttle cable, cruise throttle cable onto the main body. It wouldn't work by pulling the uh, pedal accelerator, in other words, pulling two. So there's your normal throttle would be here for your, rev, for your pedal, but it wouldn't do it. It wouldn't pull both cables. I had the, this cruise cable going inside the car. It's going to have to come into the engine bay. So we've made a bracket just here, an add on bracket there, and then there's a tab onto the rod of the butterfly valve and a little adjusting screw there so you can link your cable in and you can also accelerate out and the tab just allows it to go through so you've got no problems with that okay so that's a little mod that i had to do uh, it's just just too much force going through two cables that's all the bellows just can't manage the the newton meter pull that it needs to do it the force if you will 
So we'll do a dry run without any engine running. I grab the control box, take it up, and then we should get movement here. I'll have this in my hand. We're gonna go for set. There it goes. Now put my brakes on. Off we go. Set back again. And off we go. So we're pulling there on the rest. What would happen? Um, what would happen is if I turn the frequency generator and move it a little bit, that'll act as virtual revs to the engine. So we're going to set a slow speed first. Bear with me as we film this. Let's fire up. <clears throat> let's get a slow speed dialed in first. So let's get down to 40, approximately 40. There'll be a point where this unit won't let me lock on. Looks like it won't let you lock on there, that's too slow. There we go, we're on there, that's about 40 now. So cancel that, just hit the brakes. That cancels it. So we just want to make sure that it isn't too much revs. We don't know what 40 equates to on front, but let me just have a look at the movement. That's quite high revs though. You'll find that it, uh, it'll, it'll rev that quite high to get to that speed. But once it achieves that speed, it's going to be interesting how this works. I'd imagine it's going to rev pretty high as it hunts around. I'm just going to try for a lower speed. I think that's just too much. Let's see what some slower speed we can, we can get away with. It's trying to fight there. Brakes on. Slower speed I can actually dial into it. Get a bit better there. That's not too bad. We can go with that. Here we go. Engine's a bit cold. We do all the rev when it's cold. Okay, we're now on the cruise control. Uh, here's the engine, so you're looking at a picture of this. Here we go. Slow down and it'll speed up. Can you hear that as I'm varying the speed now, the engine's running, just listen to this. So this is speeding up, going anti-clockwise, is, is getting faster in the car, the revs will drop. I think that's on tick over, so it's happy where it is. If I go slower, slower, clockwise for slower. You can see just by it's quite harsh because my controls simulate the simulate the road speed changing very quickly. 
but it's the closest I can get. It'll, be, it'll rev right out now. Watch this. Pulling back for you. Pull right back. Hold on. Right, it's died out because uh, it doesn't like the way that it's, it can't find it, so for safety the cruise cuts out now. We can resume. So you can see that it's controlling the throttle okay, the rest of it's down to road testing. We've tested the principle. Let's go again. Okay, we've achieved some good things here. We know the cable linkages all work. We know the cruise control module's been repaired, so perseverance on that one. Willie really made up with myself for fixing that. And um, you saw the live engine test there. It's a bit aggressive, simply because they, we're not in motion. But we've tested the full deflection, so fully open, fully closed, so we know it can go through that. Now I'm going to give you, with the engine off, simulating the road speed. We've dialed in a speed about midway and I'm going to simulate the car slowing down and speeding up and you'll see how it corrects itself. We're now going to slow down so the revs go up. We're now going to speed up, it's going to start to drop down. You'll hear the clicks. And now going too slow so it's going to, let's say we're going up a hill, we're losing speed, it's going to just very gradually try and offset it, I'm going to move you right in, speed up, So look how it clicks in very gently. Let's just wave around now the speed. Waving the speed around. Nice and smooth that.
Now we're going to go way too fast and fool it. Let's see if it overspeeds out and it should just kill itself. Take you across to the pump while that's going on. You can just see it there. You'll hear it clicking. The bellows there. Okay, so we're going for it. Now we're going to overspeed. Go. On. And that completes the test. We may as well box everything up now. Um, and that is a live test in the car. So we carry on fixing the wires. Let's put the engine away. Engine's still running good, by the way. So this section of that bit in 38 closed. Let's move on to some, another task. I'm really happy with the way that's worked out. Guys, just putting together the finishing touches of the wiring harness, giving it uh, the grey loom wrap. You saw that cruise just before. Um, we've built an interface box now for it. I'll talk you through that in a minute. Don't forget, we're right in the middle of 38, and, and no, I ain't forgot about the body shell. This is just to pad the video out, isn't it? Some people love this kind of stuff. Just finishing off. We'll talk about the breakout box, but it's up and running. Um, I left the wires exposed until it was all tested, and now it's all tested. We can shrink wrap down, heat shrink down, and then uh, loom wrap up. We're nearly done with the loom wrapping, actually. One more run to do, and I'll show you what we've done. We'll lay it out, we'll clear the floor, and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at what we're up to. One thing I do need to do is fit the centre console speaker because that goes right behind the dash and you can't get to it very well. So I've built one. Hold on while I turn down Radio 6, just to say. Radio 6 going down. No music on in the background just yet. Let's have a look what we've built. Two of those Pioneer speakers. They're adequate for the system I've got. And then some nice mesh on the front. And then a bit of aluminium sandwich plate. It's got a plastic hybrid type of material plastic sandwich between aluminium plates really good stuff easy to cut and shape good old tiger seal bonding the speakers on so they don't rattle because you can nuts and bolts on them can rattle then a, a grill on top that's bonded on then this offers up into the centre console that's your double speaker it just fits in I've, I've measured it all so we need to fit that again this is tiger sealed into the centre console sounds crazy but uh, it creates an air seal so that the full sound wave goes through and it doesn't rattle and these are pretty fit for life speakers so we'll before we fit it to the center console we solder on our speaker wires and leave them dangling down this needs to go on at this stage now while we can get to that center console so away we go solder on here two wires got my cables ready just down by my feet picking them up bringing them with you we go on there heat shrink on two and two and then we uh, bunch the cables up tiger seal this into the dash I know that sounds crazy because you can't screw it back down but don't worry these speakers will run for life anyway you can get it you can pry it out I'll just be doing four fixing points there's no real way of fixing to the centre dash without it showing up on the front through the windscreen I've done it on Swampy and Swampy speakers still running great so we'll fit that rattle proof so there's no vibrations soldering on and then offering up to the car, that's another job out of the way. Nicely soldered, heat shrink on. Just for a little bit of more pro finish. There we go for those two. Same again for this side. Off we go. Do, 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 do. Electrics is my favourite job, as you probably gathered. I just love doing wiring, wiring and welding paint and retrim I do not like but wiring and welding I'm a bit of a fan of me solder love tinning wires love building electronics love cortinas let's get these on we're so smoking A good iron is what you need. Keep the wolf from the door and make life easier. We're doing good. Are you with me at home? <clears throat> what are you up to? Is it a Friday? Is it a Saturday? At what point did this video get released? I'm going to aim for a 
Thursday night late upload so you got it for the weekend part 38 we're surviving weather's changed we're getting a bit colder now September of course where did that summer go we ask if you ask me I think every single show I went to bar two it rained absolutely okay we're on we just need the heat gun now for those good really good really good really good hope you're enjoying the show so far these are going nicely looking forward to getting the stereo going as well and the dash in okay finish with that bit Hey, so a shiny shell back. We are back. We are in. We've got ourselves a shell. Oh, ho, 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 yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. We're nice and shiny. So what do we put on first? We go to the petrol flap and we put on our petrol flap bunk in true tradition. Shell is here. We're ready to start building. That's going to be the fun bit. Uh, what to go on first, but I'm going to put on the, first the all the heater ducting in that bulkhead area and the pedal box and everything to do with getting the, behind the dash mechanically, so we'll start with that but first I'll uh, do the um, christening of the car with the rubber bung that's the little bouncy bung that stops the flap from crashing out we'll do that and then we'll uh, start just grabbing bits and put them on, we can put striker plates on, we can do all sorts of things, so bit by bit I'll keep cutting to the uh, video as we build up engine bay, interior bits, it's got to have its vinyl roof yet so we're waiting for that, so I don't want to put too much inside so I can work out my wiring harness routes for that cruise control, it's going to be going under the back seat there okay, there's some dust in here as well, we need to hoover that out but we're getting on we're moving on and that shell is downtown in the exciting nice finish maize yellow there's a little bit more of um, mopping and polishing to do we're between jobs it's going back to the body shop it's just that we've got 10 days spare and the body shop didn't want it in the way and I couldn't keep it anywhere else so I brought it back to the unit uh, I thought I'll use that 10 days to get as much uh, done as I can on the car and then it'll go for its headline and then back to the paint shop for a little bit of a touch up and a, um, a buff. There's a few little imperfections I spotted, which they'll do for me. A couple of little things, nothing major. A uh, little mark on the back, just on that corner there. A few little things that I spotted, which they said it was fine, just bring it in when you're ready. So a nice shell, told you it'd be great in 38 and we'd get that shell in. I'm a bit restricted on space. I've got to wheel it in and out, I've got to be really careful not to damage it as well 
but um, let's just go rooting through all those boxes that we made up. We can put that filler cap rubber on, we can put the jack rubbers on, we can start getting the wiring harnesses in. They won't get in the way of the, the trimmers, uh, the roof lining and the, the vinyl roof. So we'll do everything that doesn't get in the way, starting from now. Just a little bit of info for episode 38. Here travelling back with Swampy after a show at the Manchester Event City. September show, I think it was 15 and 16 September. Coming back from that now. Swampy's last show, he's now retired for the foreseeable future. As Ruby takes over the realm, Swampy gets a much needed break and some stone chip repair few other little uh, scuffs to fix 25,000 miles 500 25,500 miles no one breakdown in that time it's not bad going well uh, two flat batteries leaving lights on at shows other than that nothing else um, that's it Swampy says goodbye uh, he bows out all in one piece all intact at least for the next two miles anyway so uh, yeah, a little clip about Swampy there, I'll switch back to Ruby now. Ruby takes over, it's coming up. Railway train lottery, here we go. What are we gonna get? Oh, Pacer, twin, <laughs> there's four of them. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, do you see that? Four little baby Pacers. They're ugly, aren't they? I love them. Okay, yeah. The places we get to. The wind is bad. So, uh, so you can see the dash. Right back. That's it. So, the places we get to. This one we can't even get down here. Oh my god. Whoops. That because I'm in? There was no, no <laughs> clearance. We're going to hit the target bang on every time. That was a trek across all them fields. Gravel. The old escort line. It's got the name on it. Sorry, my mistake. An old escort line. Ah, oh, wow. That's left for dead, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Parking. Okay, so we can park. Let me get the gates. Carry on filming and I'll get the gates. Raven lunatic. Look at him. <laughs> we'll probably get arrested now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was my ginger dance. That's cool. Was that a good gig? Was that a gingham dance? Are you not sure this gate's a bit close on the left hand side? Was it a gingham dance? A gingham one. A gangham one, you mean? Not a gingham, a gingham one. Gangham. Was it a gangham dance? Oh, it was more like a bit of a. Frustrated Nothing. body pop thing, oh, I would shit. have said. Right. Sort of break dance party meets, basically. Meets mental hospital yeah. asylum. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like what we've done with the place? He's we can't it. find this in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Keep it running. Oh my lord. Oh, he's doing another dance. Oh no, he's praying to Allah. <laughs>
Krim is in his element. Oh God. Jim, Jim, you're right. Look what we got. Look what we got. <laughs> Do you want to take the camera it's with you? It's just in the middle of the... Look, you, we're li are we live? Yeah, we're live. We're actually we're live. live. We're actually live. We bring you right in. Thanks to Rob Wordsworth for this one. Uh, okay, what we got? Start hitting me with some figures, lads. Elredge, Ross Style, centre caps. It's vinyl roof, though. What's going on? Um, no, aftermarket vinyl roof. Wrong vinyl pattern. Aftermarket vinyl roof. You can see back. Oh my god. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh Christ! Oh, oh my God! Oh, oh Jesus! The whole roof's gone.
okay. <laughs> what do you reckon? Good, bad, middle, don't know. Um, top, middle and bottom. Top, middle and bottom. I reckon it's fixable if it were for the roof. But what a nice little piece of bonus footage you've got there for 38. You know, it makes sense. It's all great. I hope you enjoyed that little clip. Salvageable, just about uh, an L though, you know. Not really for me, but I'd like to get it a good home. Needs an engine and gearbox. Um, looked around it, boot looked good, engine bay looked good, sills were alright, especially the inner sills. Uh, the roof's completely whole, it just needs the whole roof skin change. Do you want to do it? Do you feel lucky? That was a bit of bonus footage anyway. We've got to get Swampy out of here now. We'll catch you in 39.